You're watching Extras from the Extension on Eagle Community Television. This show is brought to you by Carico Implement. Well, hello, I'm Stacy Campbell with K-State Research and Extension of Ellis County, and I have a guest with me here today, J.P. Michaud. J.P. is uh, an entomologist here at the Agriculture Research Center in Hayes, and J.P., appreciate you coming on today. My pleasure. And uh, we've got some not so good news for our growers that grow grain sorghum here in Kansas. There appears to be a new pest on the horizon that is south of us, but uh, all indications are is that it's probably going to get here next year. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this uh, pest? Well, they're calling it the white sugar cane aphid to distinguish it from the yellow sugar cane aphid. Mm -hmm. But it's really something that we haven't dealt with before. It's exploded in Texas in 2013, and this year it's moved mostly to the northeast, all the way through Arkansas, Mississippi, Louisiana, all the way up to Tennessee. So uh, we were really quite fortunate that the movement directly north came fairly late in the season. Right. Okay, and as recently, uh, and so late in August, it was present even up into northern Oklahoma. And just this past weekend, uh, Labor Day weekend, we had the first report from Sumner County in Kansas, which would have been just very small infestations. So really, we're fortunate because most of our grain sorghum now is pretty much headed out. And okay. so it's, 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 it's safe for this year. So we're really not at the point where we're going to sustain any damage. But I think we're fortunate we didn't have earlier migrations. Now, next year, it's going to be a different story because not only, you know, are there chances to have more normal wind patterns that bring aphids directly north from their overwintering grounds in Texas, but also we have a much larger area infested to the south of us. So many more source populations. Okay. And then uh, this sugarcane aphid is a subtropical uh, insect. And uh, also tell us, maybe tell us a little bit about where it came from and also how it reproduces and, and how that affects the numbers and, and so forth. Well, sorghum producers, if you've been producing sorghum for any time, you're quite familiar with managing green bug, which is a problem has quite receded significantly over the past 10 years. In comparison to green bug, this aphid is not as directly damaging to the plant, so you don't get as much rapid development of chlorosis on the leaves, but the reproductive rate is much higher and the developmental rate is faster. And so really that, the, the pest status, the importance of, a, of the aphid as a pest is strongly dependent on its reproductive and developmental rates. And in this regard, uh, this aphid is, uh, reproduces three times as fast as green bug. And so essentially, you can have populations that double in size every four to five days. Okay. So that, that's really, it takes more aphids to damage the plant, uh, but they also feed much longer in, through the stages of plant development all the way up to grain fill. And so that's a problem too, because they can still be present in harvest. You can have harvest problems because of all the honeydew and they can affect the uh, quality and quantity of the grain. Yeah, and talking about the problems, I know in Texas we were talking, there's been uh, losses as much as 50% in some fields and what I think the estimates this year or last year were how many millions of dollars? Well, uh, it, it would be preliminary, of course, but probably something along the lines of about $50 million in Texas if you account for lost productivity and the cost of the control measures that have been taken to preserve yield. Okay, okay. Yeah, and, and like you kind of alluded to, um, it, it can be a problem at harvest time. So, so maybe they come in late, uh, may, maybe you do or don't spray. Uh, and, but, but then when you're going out there and harvesting, you may, with that honeydew on the leaves and everything, it may bog down your machinery. You may have to stop and even clean the machinery up. So it's really causing some, some havoc, I believe, down there and, and will probably get up here and cause us some problems as well. Well, I think, as I say, that we're pretty safe for this year because of the, the, right. um, the stages of development of our, of our crop. But next year, if we have more of a normal summer, earlier spring, more typical weather patterns, I think it's, it's pretty much a, a certainty that we will have some significant infestations. Uh -huh. What we don't know at this point is how far north this aphid will overwinter. Right. We know it overwinters very well in South Texas, but it probably won't overwinter very far north. Uh, um, 
into Oklahoma, probably won't overwinter in Kansas because it doesn't have the ability to do so. It doesn't even produce sexual forms or resting stages like eggs. So, uh, but that's not going to say that it, it won't create significant problems here because as it stands, most of our green bugs, um, for example, they didn't overwinter here either. But in the years where we had problems, there were massive migrations from Texas that can uh, be devastating to, to the Kansas crop as well. So yeah, they, they come up from the winds basically. They come up on the winds and these aphids of course have a cycle of maturity much like the crop. And so when you have a large infestation develop, at first you don't have any winged forms, you don't have any migrants, they're all without wings and they're reproducing. But once the crop starts to go down and the aphid colonies start to mature, then they all develop wings. And so you have this huge flight of, of winged aphids. And depending who's downwind of that, you know, which way the wind is blowing, that pretty much determines where they go. And usually, as you know, in the summer when our, our Milo's growing, we've got winds from the south prevailing. Mm -hmm. And so we get whatever they have. Right, right. Okay, well in closing, is there anything else you'd like to add about the sugar cane aphid? I guess just something we're going to have to be on the lookout for I for I think next everybody year. who's going to be planting grain sorghum next year needs to be on the lookout for it. Yes. And, and uh, the earlier you can find it, the better. And uh, we're going to have to, uh, the odds are we're going to have to make some, uh, some, some insecticide applications and hopefully get a section 18 for this uh, sulfoxiflor, which is uh, looking like it's the most effective material. But it is hard to spray for these aphids and do a good job because uh, they're all underneath the leaves, well within the canopy. And you, you really need to use ground application equipment with a very, relatively high volume of water, at least 10, 10 gallons per acre. So spraying from the air is not going to get the job done. And uh, drop nozzles are really the... Advantageous. Get the material up underneath the leaves. And then one final thing you had mentioned possibly is something to look at is, is if we do get into that mode where we have to spray is maybe leave a refuge area out there, a bad part of the field where the sorghum's not as good, a few corners maybe where you don't spray, and that's because we can try to, to have a, a refuge for those beneficials, right? Well, if we look historically at other aphid problems that have invaded our cereal crops, Russian wheat aphid, green bug, eventually we've had very good control naturally, natural by, naturally present beneficial insects. And our preliminary research shows that in fact all of these lady beetles, lace wings, surfeit flies, all these beneficial insects respond very well and like to feed on sugarcane aphid. And so if we want to ask ourselves what is the fastest route to the final solution of this situation, it could be leaving areas unsprayed, as you said, just to allow our first responders to survive. Yeah. So the, the problem of having to spray all our fields with these large populations is that we're also killing the first responders the that ultimately could m multiply their numbers and give us this natural and sustained control where you don't have to spray. Right. So unfortunately, that's the kind of, you know, the trade-off that we have to deal with. Yes, we need to spray, we're going to need to spray to suppress, uh, to, to protect some yield, but at the same time, if we could just leave some little areas, perhaps less productive corners of the field unsprayed, then we could allow our beneficial insects to reproduce and ultimately give us a much better level of control. Right, and like you said, it's a small area. We're not talking acres. No. Yes. Okay. Well, JP, we appreciate you taking the time to come out here today and, and talk about this uh, unfortunately new pest that's probably going to be coming to, uh, to Kansas possibly next year. Uh, in our grain sorghum, it's called the sugar cane aphid. The white sugar cane. The white cane. sugar cane aphid, yes. And uh, for more information about it, to see pictures of it, um, you could go to the KSRE website, uh, the website at the experiment station, or our website, you know, at the county extension office here in Ellis County. But if you need more information, I guess we can just get a hold of one of us. Uh, this has been Stacy Campbell with K-State Research and Extension of Ellis County with J.P. Michelle, Extension Entomologist at the Hayes Experiment Station with Eagle Community Television. You're watching Extras from the Extension on Eagle Community Television. This show is brought to you by Carico Implement. Fall is almost here and it's a great time to come out and visit Carico Implement in Hayes for all of your fall lawn care needs. We stock and sell a full line of John Deere riding lawn equipment along with Honda Walk Kind mowers and generators. We also offer a full lineup of steel outdoor power products. If your project requires even more muscle, come check out the lineup of John Deere compacts, tractors, and skid loaders. And don't forget, we have the parts and services to keep you up and running 
for whatever your fall lawn care needs are. So come visit Carrico Implement for a solution that fits.